Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. God is good. We thank him for giving us another opportunity to remember the Sabbath, uh, to keep it holy. Because in six days, the Lord made the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. And the creature is not better than the creator. So if God did it, I want to do it too. Praise the Lord. I don't do it to get saved, I do it because I am saved. And because I used to live my life as a rebel, I didn't care about the things of God, nor did I care about his commandments. Uh, but once I was born again by faith alone, through Christ alone, hallelujah, I've entered into his eternal rest. And because I've entered into his eternal rest, I want to uh, be like uh, my master. Um, the disciple is not above the master. And so if the master did it, it's good enough for me. And he kept the Sabbath, so I'm going to keep the Sabbath too to the best of uh, my ability that he empowers me to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so hallelujah for another Sabbath. Uh, thank you for everything you do for us, King Jesus. Uh, bless this time of teaching. Uh, give us strength to hear the word and to apply the word and teach us great and mighty things that we do not know. Bless all those who are tuned in to listen to the word that you have given me to share with others. And may you receive all the glory, honor, and praise for you are worthy. Hallelujah. In Yeshua's name, I pray and ask it all. Amen. This is the seventh installment of When the Temple in Heaven Opens, Everything Will Change. And today I want to go over um, the signs, hallelujah, that accompany um, everything that we've been talking about. Um, as well as go over a brief recap, if I can, at the end of this. But the Bible tells us that there will be signs in the last days, signs that will alert all those who are watching and praying that the temple is soon to open. Uh, Yeshua said, when all these things begin to take place, look up, uh, for your redemption draws nigh. You see, but, uh, in Jesus' day, when Yeshua was walking on the earth, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the, the religious leaders, they, they demanded to see a sign from, uh, from King Jesus. <laughs> and we read here in Matthew 16, when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to test him and asked him to show them a sign from heaven, uh, Yeshua answered them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. Uh, you, you see how the master just puts things so plainly and bluntly? You see, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they, they wanted to test Yeshua. They wanted to test him. Hallelujah. They wanted to find uh, some flaw in him with a test. They tried to trick him and trap him at every turn they, they could uh, uh, come up with. But, you know, no one can outsmart God. There is no counsel, no strength, no might, uh, no wisdom against the Almighty. <laughs> he is the rock of our salvation, and hallelujah, no one can uh, outmaneuver him. And so, you know, the master, uh, being as he is, which is God in the flesh, he, he tells them, he tells them and puts them right in their place. He tells them uh, that they're good at looking at uh, the weather and interpreting uh, the weather forecast for the day. But when the Son of God was right in their presence, they couldn't even understand the sign of the time. Uh, the Messiah was there in their midst. Uh, the Messiah was the one that was talking to them directly face to face. But yet they totally missed it. They totally missed it. You know, and these are the religious leaders, the one who, who the one who, they had the Torah. They had the holy text. They had the ordinances. They had the temple. Uh, they knew everything there was to know about religion. Uh -huh. they, they were masters at religion. But their religion was vain because uh, they substituted the commandments of 
God for the doctrines of men. Yes, they, they were under the influence of doctrines of demons, and uh, those doctrines of demons superseded uh, the commandments of God. And because those doctrines of demons superseded the commandments of God, they were blind to the one who was in their midst. They were blind to the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah who came to redeem them from their evilness and wicked ways. But, you know, it was all God's plan. It was all God's plan for it to work out how it did. Hallelujah. Because the Jews' rejection opened up the way of salvation for the Gentiles. Those who are blind and lame and those who are poor and weak like me. Those who were destitute and without hope. Those who were strangers from the covenant of God. Those who were foreigners and aliens to the promises of Abraham. Uh, by the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus, I have been brought near to the throne room of grace to receive mercy in my time of need. Hallelujah. Uh, because Yeshua has gone before me, and, and I have called out to him. Hallelujah. And before the foundations of the world, I was predestined to inherit glory. Hallelujah. I, I didn't choose him. He chose me. Hallelujah. You see, because if I still had my stinking thinking, if I was still lost in my ways, I would have never came to Yeshua. Hallelujah. I would, I would still be out there in the world, if not dead, in hell right now, crying for just a drop. Hallelujah. Just a drop of water to cool my tongue. Uh, but thank God. Hallelujah. Thank King Jesus. He did not leave me in such a wretched state. Oh, he's a good God. How can you not love him? Hallelujah. Uh, but yes, the, the Bible tells us that we are to be aware of the signs of the times because when Yeshua comes again, hallelujah, uh, when he comes again, there will be religious peoples like Pharisees and Sadducees as well as the whole world who are lying in the hands of the wicked one who will come continue to demand for signs and, and ask, where is the promise of his coming? Uh, because all things continue just as they always have. Hallelujah. You see, but they say these things ignorantly because they do not know God, neither do they understand his power. Hallelujah. You see, but God will leave a witness. Hallelujah. For those who diligently seek him and that witness hallelujah uh cannot be corrupted hallelujah the witness is in the heavens hallelujah the witness that yeshua will come again ha has been established in the heavens hallelujah that's why yeshua said in the last days there will be signs hallelujah in the sun and the moon and the stars hallelujah let's read it in luke 21 Luke 21 says this, uh, uh, verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Hallelujah. So Yeshua said that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. Hallelujah. To signal when he comes again. To signal when the cloudy day comes again. There will be signals in the heavens that he created. Hallelujah. In the sun and the moon and the stars. There will be markers to let us know that Yeshua is going to come sooner than we all think. You see, when Yeshua first came, hallelujah, there was a sign in the heavens. Uh, uh, the star of Bethlehem. Hallelujah. And uh, the wise men from the east, they saw his star. Hallelujah. <coughs> And those wise men who came all the way from ancient Babylon, who were instructed by Daniel, hallelujah. Uh, Daniel had set up a school uh, of wise men, hallelujah. He was over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel uh, instructed th those wise men in Babylon to look for that sign in the heaven that will one day come. The star that would arise out of Jacob, hallelujah. 
And that star that would arise out of Jacob would appear in the heavens one day. And Daniel told them exactly what to look for. And when that star appeared that would arise out of Jacob in the heavens, when that star appeared, hallelujah, the wise men were looking in the sun and the moon and the stars uh, 2,000 years ago. And when they saw the sign, they came all the way from Babylon to Jerusalem, hallelujah, in order to worship the king, the one who was born king of the Jews, hallelujah. And the wise men brought him uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, hallelujah. And they beheld the king of glory, hallelujah, when he first came. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, the precedent has been set. Uh, when Yeshua first came, there was a sign in the heavens, and those who were paying attention to the signs of the times knew it. But for those who were not paying attention to the signs of the times, uh, they did not know the hour of their visitation, just like the Sadducees and the Pharisees didn't, uh, even though they had the holy text, even though they had the Torah, even though they should have known, they should have been in Bethlehem. They should have been right there, hallelujah. They should have been right there when Yeshua was born. They should have been welcoming him with open arms. The, the deliverer of Israel had appeared, hallelujah. But there was not even room for the master to be born. There wasn't even room in the inn for uh, the king of glory to be born. Uh, there was no one there to welcome him. Angels had to appear to the shepherds, hallelujah, in the field, in order to announce the good tidings that the king of Israel was born, hallelujah. Uh, and the shepherds had to hurry up and leave their flock to go and see this great thing, hallelujah to go and see the miracle of miracles, the virgin giving birth to the very Son of God. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus, the Messiah. Hallelujah. And uh, there was only two people uh, recorded in the Bible who actually were looking for uh, the coming of uh, Yeshua, uh, Simeon and Anna in the temple in uh, the account of Luke. Hallelujah. Uh, Simeon and Anna were uh, devout Jews who were waiting for the consolation of Israel. And they were waiting in the temple for Yeshua to be brought in in order th so that he would be dedicated to the Lord. And so it was only two people out of all of Israel who were looking for the Messiah to come. Only two people, hallelujah, out of all of the nation of Israel were waiting for the Messiah to come. Can you even imagine, my goodness, the heart of man is desperately wicked, hallelujah, my goodness, how much more, how much more in our day and age, there's billions upon billions upon billions of people on this planet, but how many people are actually aware of the signs of the times? How many people are actually aware of the signs in the sun, in the moon, and the stars that God has continued to give in our generation? The generation of the end. The generation where knowledge has increased. Hallelujah. The generation where man ha uh, can go to and fro at a whim. Hallelujah. Just like Daniel said would happen in the last days. But how many people actually care about the things of God? How many people out of those billions and billions and billions of people actually care about the things of God? Hallelujah. Yeah, a lot of people may play religion uh, like the Pharisees and Sadducees did, but how many of them actually are like Annas and Simeon who are hastening for the day, who are looking for the coming of the Lord on the clouds? Hallelujah. Only a remnant, hallelujah, uh, only a remnant are looking for him. Uh, the Bible puts it bluntly, uh, five were wise and five were foolish, the ten virgins. It's 50-50. It's about a 50-50. Uh, uh, the Bible says in that day, on the cloudy day, one will be taken, the other will be left. It's 50-50. <laughs> it's 50-50. Not everyone talking about heaven is going. Not everyone who's talking about going to the marriage supper of the Lamb is going. In that day when, when the heavens shake uh, and the earth shakes, hallelujah, one will be taken and the other will be left. 
I mean, that's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. It's 50, 50. And that's, and, and those are, those are talking about people who, 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 who claim to believe. Okay. Uh, uh, the 10 virgins, hallelujah. Uh, five were wise and five were foolish. They all had a knowledge of Jesus Christ, but only five had oil. You see, it takes more than just the head knowledge. You know, you have to have the truth in you. You have to live the truth, walk the truth. You have to believe the truth. The truth has to be in you through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because it's the only, it's only by the Holy Spirit that we can do anything. It's the Holy Spirit living and abiding in us that we can do anything. Hallelujah. You see, except we abide in him and he in us, that's the only time that we can bear fruit. That's the only time that we are useful uh, for the king. Hallelujah. You see, but if you're not abiding in him, uh, the Bible says that you're a, a withered branch. You're, you're good for nothing. You're, you're, you're plucked up by the roots, twice dead. Hallelujah. Only good for fuel for the fire. Hallelujah. You see, unless we bear fruit, and the Bible puts that uh, pretty bluntly too in the parable of the seed and the sower. Uh, the Bible says that the, uh, Yeshua went out to sow seed in this field, and uh, there were four types of soil. And out of the four, only one was good. Only one of the soils out of the four uh, produced good fruit. So that's one out of every four people. One out of every four people, hallelujah, that hear the word, get it. One out of every four people get the word of God. That's one fourth out of all of humanity. One out of every four people actually do something with the word because they were predestined, preordained, chosen before the foundation of the world to inherit glory. Hallelujah. Oh, who can understand the mind of God? Oh, the depths and the riches and the wisdom of Almighty God. Oh, he's such a good God. Hallelujah. But let's get back to these signs. You see, uh, the Bible says that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And we see that in 1994, hallelujah, Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 uh, hit planet Jupiter. Uh, this comet broke up into 21 pieces, hallelujah. And this was the first time a comet was observed uh, by humans to be hitting a planetary body. July 16th, 1994, and over the course of uh, six days, I believe, uh, 21 fragments slammed into Jupiter, hallelujah. And the biggest uh, of all the explosions was said to be bigger than uh, the giant red spot, hallelujah. And uh, that's massive, okay? That's massive. We see right here on um, Wikipedia. Here are the fragments, uh, and the Bible says, that, uh, well, I'm sorry, not the Bible. Wikipedia says, a total of 21 fragments were spotted. And these 21 fragments all slammed into Jupiter. Hallelujah. From July 16th uh, through July 22nd, 1994. Uh, I believe those 21 fragments was a sign from God. Because everything happens for a reason. There's nothing that happens by happenstance in this world. This was uh, a sign in the heavens for the last generation. The last generation was able to see this because we had the power of telescopes that could look out there uh, into the heavens and see what was going on out there in Jupiter. And to see that this comet was about to hit Jupiter, hallelujah. Uh, the ancients uh, didn't have this type of technology to peer out into space and look all the way to Jupiter to see this event happen. But in the last generation, our generation, we had the power to do it, the technology to do it, and God gave us a sign. And these 21 fragments, I believe, uh, represents the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls, hallelujah, that will uh, be unleashed on the cloudy day. And I also believe that these 21 fragments represent 21 years, hallelujah, uh, that led to the next sign in the heavens. So we take uh, 1994 and we add uh, 21 to that. We get to the year 2015, hallelujah. Another uh, sign in the heavens appeared for this generation again, and that was the blood moon tetrad. The blood moon tetrads 
uh, that all appeared on Jewish feast days uh, with the sun darkened in the middle of it all. This occurred on uh, uh, Nisan 1, uh, the first of the Jewish year. And the first of the Jewish year was uh, the year 5775, which was March 20th, 2015 on the Gregorian calendar. But uh, those 21 fragments that slammed into Jupiter, a sign in the heavens uh, that the tribulation was near, uh, was pointing us to this blood moon tetrad of uh, 2014 and 2015. Hallelujah. The blood moon tetrads all appeared on Jewish feast days. Hallelujah. And, and these uh, blood moon tetrads have uh, appeared the last three times they appeared in human history. Uh, they all had major events connected with Israel. Uh, 1967 uh, to 1968, they had a blood moon tetrad, uh, which dealt with the Six-Day War, where uh, uh, Israel recaptured their ancient capital of Jerusalem. Then they had another blood moon tetrad in uh, 1948, um, 1949, that had dealt with Israel uh, becoming a nation again. Hallelujah. And then they had one back in uh, 1492 and 1493, uh, the time when the Jews were expelled from Spain and America was discovered, uh, modern-day Babylon the Great. So uh, the last three times, not including this time, uh, there was a blood moon tetra that all signaled something, that all had to do with uh, Israel. And this one, hallelujah, this last one, 2014-2015, uh, this one uh, had to do with what is coming. And what is coming is the tribulation, which is why uh, Comet Shoe Le Shoemaker Levy 9, hallelujah, and the 21 fragments that plummeled uh, the planet Jupiter was pointing to this time to, to, to watch out because there's a blood moon tetrad coming. Uh, and we know every time that these blood moon tetrads, uh, uh, four blood moons that appear on Jewish feast days, we know that whenever these things appear, Something uh, with Israel uh, is on the horizon. And the next thing that's going to happen with Israel is the Great War, which will begin the tribulation. And that Great War is none other than the Gog and Magog invasion. But that's not all. There's more signs that God has given us in this last generation. Uh, Yeshua said in uh, Joel, hallelujah, through the prophet Joel, that in the uh, last days, uh, the sun would turn into sackcloth and uh, the moon would turn into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Okay, that's in Joel chapter 2. Okay, and this was a sign of that, but there's even more. Hallelujah. Because we had, uh, just last year, the great American solar eclipse. Hallelujah. We had the great American solar eclipse, a sign, a, a, a great sign the sign of the prophet Jonah. <laughs> wow, what a sign this was. I, I was able to see it. I was in South Carolina when I saw this. Praise God. And this was a sign for the first time since 1918, a total solar eclipse was visible from coast to coast in the United States of America. Uh, the first time in 99 years, uh, a solar eclipse was accessible to all of North America, all of the United States of America. The first time in 99 years, and they say that it was also the first time since before uh, 1776 that a solar eclipse was visible for all of uh, America and the solar eclipse touched no other nation but America. Uh, hallelujah. Okay, and we know that the year 1776 is famous for the year of the uh, America's founding. And we also know that this solar eclipse started in the 33rd state, Oregon, and it ended on the 33rd parallel, which uh, was South Carolina. And we also know that it passed through seven cities by the name of Salem. Okay, we know that seven is foundational. Uh, to the word of God. is foundational to God himself. The number seven has to do with completion and perfection. And so uh, we know that the number nine has to do with finality and judgment. Okay. Okay. It was 99 years uh, the last time this happened. So that's a double nine. Hallelujah. 
A double nine, uh, that means double finality, double judgment, okay? Uh, praise the Lord, okay? So this was a definite sign for Babylon the Great, the sign of the prophet Jonah, you know? Um, because 40 days later, hallelujah, 40 days later came this. 40 days later came this on September 23rd, 2017, okay? We had the great sign in heaven. Wow. Just, just wow. Just look at, look at what God has done in our day and age. It's just, it's just amazing. All these signs in this last generation God has given us. The first time in, in, in 7,000 years. Okay, since the creation, when God said, let there be light and there was light, this sign has appeared. It's already done. Revelation chapter 12, 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Okay, there's plenty of uh, uh, videos about this great sign in heaven that appeared last year. And this great sign has been fulfilled, okay? There's no doubt about it. This was a sign, another sign that God is telling those who are watching and praying that the temple is about to be open because we know that the next thing that happens in Revelation 12 is that um, the dragon appears, okay? The dragon appears and, and he's going to try to... to, to to swallow up uh, the child that's born, hallelujah, but he can't because the child is caught up unto God and to his throne, and the man-child is the body of Christ. The man-child is the body of Christ that is caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we're presented uh, before the Father for the marriage supper of the Lamb. We see that in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, well, let's read that because, yeah, that, that's, that's powerful. Daniel chapter 7 shows us that uh, we come with the Son of Man back to heaven to uh, to be presented before the Father uh, for the marriage supper of the Lamb. On the day when um, the temple is open and the tribulation begins, uh, we see that uh, the Son of Man is given dominion. Hallelujah. Uh, look at what Daniel says, verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, okay, the clouds, there goes the clouds, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days. The ancient of days is the father and was presented before him. Okay. The marriage supper of the lamb. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. We're forgiven of all our sins. Hallelujah. Uh, we're able to be in the presence of God and to the lamb, to the one who, uh, uh, who did it all, the son of man, to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Okay, so this is the marriage supper of the Lamb, okay? Daniel saw the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, okay? Uh, that's the cloudy day, okay? That's the cloudy day. I can't emphasize it enough. The cloudy day when Yeshua appears on the cloud, hallelujah, to rapture his uh, church while also sending judgment upon the world, beginning with Gog and Magog and Babylon the Great, okay? Uh, raining down fire and brimstone from the clouds, sending a great earthquake, uh, the greatest earthquake in human history, hallelujah. He's going to shake everything up. He's going to shake the devil and all his demons. That's why the heavens shake. They're going to be shaken out of heaven, okay? And they're going to be confined to the earth, okay? And on the earth, uh, there's going to be the greatest earthquake in human history, okay? The whole earth is going to shake. The whole creation is going to shake. My goodness, it's God coming. I don't understand how these people who, who say that they know God think that this is going to be some walk in the park. This is God coming. This is God coming on the clouds of heaven. My goodness. Does not the Bible tell us what happened the last time God came down? The last time God came down upon Mount Sinai, the chosen people were so afraid. They were on the precipice of death. They said, please, Moses, please, Moses, do not let God speak with us anymore, lest we die, okay? 
These are the chosen people who were crying out to not let God speak with them anymore. And it was God coming down on the cloud upon Mount Sinai and fire, lightning, thunders, and the trumpets sounded louder and louder. Okay. But God was coming down to give them the revelation of the 10 words. He was coming down to give them the revelation of the Torah. Okay. He wasn't coming down for vengeance. He wasn't coming down for, for, for destruction, okay? He wasn't coming down to lay the whole land desolate. Oh, my goodness. But this time, my goodness. This time, oh, my goodness. My goodness. He's coming for war. The Lord is a man of war. Oh, my goodness. How, who can stand in that day? Oh my goodness, I don't understand who, who these people think that they're just going to, oh, oh, we're going to go through the tribulation, uh, we're going to go through this and that. You not you might not even survive the cloudy day. My goodness, I don't even understand how people think that they're going to survive just the cloudy day. The cloudy day when everything shakes. When everyone will shake at the presence of God. When every tower will fall down. When every mountain and island will be removed. My goodness, God is going to shake everything. He's going to tread upon the high places of the earth. And everything that is not planted on the rock will be shaken at his presence. Okay? But if you're planted on the rock, hallelujah, if you're planted on the rock, you'll never be moved. Hallelujah. Look what the prophet Micah says. For behold, <laughs> the Lord is coming. He leaves his throne in heaven and tramples the heights of the earth. Okay, he's, he's coming down out of heaven. Okay, the temple is going to be open and he's coming down and he's going to trample upon all the high places of the earth. He's coming out of his place. You think, and you think he's just going to, he's, he's going to come, he's going to come and he's just going to be all willy nilly against all the rebellious, against all those who rejected him. No, he's coming to tread. He's coming to knock down every wall. Okay. <laughs> he's coming to knock down everything. My goodness. Look at what happens when this day comes. Verse 4, the mountains melt beneath his feet and flow into the valleys like wax in a fire, like water pouring down a hill. Okay, the mountains are going to be melted at his presence. Oh, my goodness. Don't you see what happens when the sixth seal is open? When the sixth seal is open in Revelation, it's the same thing. The people are going to try to hide from him. The people who were on the earth at that time, they're going to try to hide from him. They're going to try to hide from the lamb, okay? Uh, verse 12, when he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake. <laughs> He's coming out of his place, okay? He's coming out of heaven. There's a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. The full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth. As the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale, the sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island were removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, and the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and every slave and free hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us! And hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who can stand? My friends, who can stand? Who can stand? <laughs> you, you, you're not going to be able to stand in this day. Everything is going to get knocked down. You're not going to be able to stand. If, if, you, if you're left behind on this day, you will feel the presence of God. You will feel the presence of God. Everything that will not be taken up on the day of the rapture, on the day when he takes those who belong to him back to the Father's house, uh, if you're not planted on the rock, you're going to feel the presence of God personally, and, and your soul will cry out. Your soul will cry out for bitter despair. 
Look at look at look at what uh Yeshua says. Look at look at what he says right here. He says in Isaiah chapter two, enter into the rock and hide in the dust from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty. Okay, enter into the rock and hide in the dust <laughs> from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty. Oh my goodness, this is God coming out of his place. This is God coming on the clouds of heaven. This is God shaking the heavens and the earth. This isn't just, this isn't a, a big bird, okay? This is God, okay? This is God in the flesh. This is God almighty, okay? He's coming to shake everything up. Oh my goodness, and if you're not ready... If you're not ready, if you're not ready, uh, this is what the Bible says, verse 19, and people shall enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth. Okay, it's like God, he puts it like this in the prophets. He said, it, he's going to wake as one wakes out of sleep. <laughs> okay, you know, sometimes when you wake up and you jump up, oh my goodness. <laughs> he, he's going to jump up and he's going to come down on the clouds, okay? And, and if you're not ready for him uh, on that day, you're going to... Uh, be terrified at his sight. You're going to be crying out for the dust to cover you. You're going to be hiding out for the mountains to fall on top of you. You're going to be crying out uh, for the rocks to give you shelter, okay? Uh, but there's going to be no shelter for you. Uh, there's going to be uh, no hiding place for you, okay? Uh, the only hiding place is in the Father's house, hallelujah. Uh, that is why Hebrews chapter 12 tells us this. Uh, See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. You see, uh, uh, God is coming to shake the heavens and everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But if you've received a kingdom, if that kingdom is planted on the rock, it can never be shaken. God is not going to shake those who belong to him. God is not going to shake those who belong to him who are planted on the rock. And that rock is Jesus. We are not appointed under wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can't be shaken. We've received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Ye Yeshua is the one who's going to do the shaking on the cloudy day. But if you belong to Yeshua, we're going to be with him when everything shakes. Hallelujah. That is why when John was caught up in Revelation chapter 4, when he was caught up, when he was caught up to the Father's house, he didn't see the earthquake or the hailstones. All he heard was the trumpet. He saw the noises and uh, the lightnings and the thunderings. When he gets up to heaven, uh, verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal, Okay, when John is taken up through the open door in heaven, he doesn't see the earthquake. He doesn't see uh, the hailstones and coals of fire uh, because he's immediately taken to the presence of God. He doesn't feel any of those effects. It's not until later in the book of Revelation when 
Yeshua reveals more because revelation in Greek is apocalypsis. And apocalypsis means unveiling, uncovering. Okay, so this book of Revelation is a, is a uncovering, an unveiling of what comes on the cloudy day and through the tribulation all the way into eternity. Okay, so the more John goes through the book of Revelation, the more he takes us through what he saw, the more he reveals about what he saw. And later on in the book of Revelation, he sees the earthquake and the hailstones uh, that come upon the earth. But he's already in heaven when he sees this. When he first is taken up to heaven, he represents the church. He represents the body of Christ. He's the, he's the dead in Christ that will rise first on this day. Because it's been 2,000 years almost since he wrote this. So he'll be called up first when the dead in Christ. But then we who are alive and remain will be right behind John. But it's going to happen so fast, it's going to happen instantly on that day. Those who are alive and remain will go right behind those who are already dead in Christ. And we'll all be raised, hallelujah, in a glorified body on the day when God shakes everything up. And the day when he, he lays everything bare and desolate, hallelujah. And uh, that day is also pictured in Isaiah. I got a couple more things and then we'll end this teaching. Isaiah 24 talks about the shaking that begins the tribulation. Okay, Isaiah 24 says this, Behold, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate. And he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. Okay, God is going to, he's going to shake everything up. This is the cloudy day. He's going to make the earth empty and make it desolate. And he's going to twist its surface. The whole topography of the earth is going to change on the day he shakes everything up. And from those who are left behind who, who uh, uh, survived uh, this day, God is going to give all those people one more chance. Uh, and, that's a, and that's an act of grace. That's an act of grace because God is full of grace. He, he, he's abundant in mercy. And he's giving those who are left behind one last chance to accept Yeshua HaMashiach. But there's going to be so much deception, so much evil, because it's the day of evil in that day. It's the day when God lets the, the devil loose. Uh, uh, for his last stand in order to deceive uh, uh, those who are left behind, in order to weed out the rebels, okay? In order to weed out those who refuse to repent, okay? And he's going to send in that day a strong delusion that those who are left behind will believe the lie because they did not love the truth, okay? Uh, but when this day comes, when God shakes everything up, uh, everything is going to be utterly broken. Everything's going to be utterly made desolate. Everything is going to be laid bare. Okay, it's God coming. Okay, this is this isn't Mary Poppins coming. Okay, I don't understand how these people think they're just going to endure uh, the shaking of God on the day of sudden destruction. This is God coming to shake everything up. The whole world is going to shake at His presence. I can't emphasize it enough. Because the whole Bible emphasizes it. You know, the whole Bible is replete with stuff about God coming and shaking the whole earth, okay? And those who are left behind, they will enter into the tribulation, okay? Uh, but let me get to this last sign. There's a sign coming up in a few days. Um, this blood, uh, super blood blue moon, okay? Another sign that God has given us, okay? Uh, this is the first... Um, Super blood blue moon. This is the first super blood uh, blue moon in, um, they say, 152 years, I believe. Let me see. I got it right here. Uh, yes, in over 150 years, uh, the super blue blood moon will appear on January 31st, okay? The last time this super blue blood moon happened was in March 31st, 1866. I looked this up, and March 31st, 1866, on the Torah calendar, March 31st, 1866, was Pesach. The last time this happened was on Passover, uh, 152 years ago. Okay, so here goes another sign, another sign that God has given us, which is about to appear uh, this coming Wednesday, okay? And the last time there was a blue moon, which means uh, two, uh, two full moons in the same month. Uh, the last time that happened 
was on July 31st, 2015. Okay, so even the last time just the blue moon happened uh, was two and a half years ago, which was sandwiched right in between uh, the last two blood moons, okay? There was a blue moon sandwiched right in between the last two blood moons, okay? So there's another connection to the blood moon tetrad, okay? Another connection. It all connects. Hallelujah. It all connects. Uh, it all connects. So we had so many signs in the heavens, starting with uh, Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 and the 21 fragments that hit Jupiter, uh, which was a sign of things to come. The 21 fragments representing the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven bowls, as well as 21 years, which pointed us to the blood moon tetrad. Uh, hallelujah which is a prophecy found in Joel chapter two. And then we had the great American solar eclipse, uh, the sun darkened again, another sign for America, Babylon the great, the sign of the prophet Jonah. Uh, America did not repent in sackcloth and ashes. So the judgment is set. Okay. America will not repent. Uh, the sign of the prophet Jonah was given. No one repented. Uh, uh, the nation as a whole did not repent like, uh, Nineveh did. Uh, Nineveh was the type, okay, and from the king on down, even to the animals, uh, everyone fasted and put on sackcloth and ashes and repented. America didn't do it, so uh, the judgment is set, okay? The judgment is coming. And we know that the next day after, um, we know the next day after the 40 days was up, uh, praise the Lord, after the 40-day warning was up, uh, they had the October, uh, I think it was October 1st, uh, where uh, they had the Las Vegas shooting, okay? There was no repentance, and so, you know, the hand of God was removed, and a sign is coming that, you know, the next time that uh, God blessed those who were, those families who suffered in that great tragedy, but uh, those bullets that rained down from Mandalay Bay, uh, the next time that judgment will come it will be the raining down of hailstones and coals of fire upon babylon the great okay uh the hand of protection is off you know america is slated for destruction babylon the great okay and and if you're left alive inside of babylon the great on the day when god shakes the whole heavens and the earth you're going to die if you're if you're left behind on that day and you're still living inside babylon the great you're dead Okay, you're 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 dead. You're you're twice dead because you go from one fire right into another fire. Okay, there's no survivors in Babylon the Great on uh, the cloudy day. Okay, no survivors at all. Everyone dead. Okay, you see the Bible says that there will be many dead bodies in every place. Uh, you know, but Babylon the Great will get it the worst. There's what almost 400 million people in Babylon the Great. The Bible says that. Uh, when the first four seals are open, one-fourth of all of humanity will die, okay? One out of every four per persons will die, you know? And and those are for the people who are left behind. So when God shakes everything up, one out of every four people is going to die, okay? And so if you just put that into perspective, you know, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet now, you know? I don't know how many people are going to go into rapture, but it's not that many, Uh you minus, uh, let's just, let's just say a billion people go into rapture who are alive and, you know, and that's just being generous, but you know, you never know. You know, okay. So we got 7 billion people left behind. Okay. So one out of every four, uh, people will die, uh, from the beginning of the day of sudden destruction. Okay. So that's over a billion people over uh, almost 1.5, uh, over 1.5 billion people dead. Okay almost 2 billion, okay, dead, okay, just uh, when God shakes everything up, on top of the billion that uh, vanished uh, out of nowhere, okay, and so, and from the ashes of the cloudy day, because it's also going to be World War Three, so nuclear bombs have gone off, you know, volcanic eruptions, the greatest earthquake in human history, Okay, that's why the sun is darkened, okay? <laughs> the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. It is even very dark with no brightness in it, okay? The stars will not give off their light, 
okay? It's just total chaos, total destruction, okay? But you see, uh, the liar will be on the earth uh, at that time. The liar, the father of lies, he, he will manifest himself in the Antichrist, whoever that is, okay? And the eighth, uh, the eighth king, which is also of the seven, according to Revelation chapter 17, the beast, the little horn of Daniel, okay, the little horn who, who arises with the ten kings, okay, the, the one uh, who is to come, the, the, the son of perdition, he will be inhabited by Satan, okay, and then he will come with all the lies that, and powers and signs and lying wonders that will deceive everyone who's left behind, okay, because He's going to make up a big old lie, uh, a big old lie as to what happened. Well, why did this happen? And, you know, I'm pretty sure that aliens, you know, will be involved. All this programming that we've been getting through entertainment and through media, you know, about aliens and the extraterrestrial life, you know, all, all that stuff that you see on TV will be manifested uh, for those who are left behind. They're, they're, they've already been conditioned uh, through entertainment to accept it because they did not accept the Bible. Uh, they didn't want Jesus, and so they're going to believe what the enemy has come to tell them, okay? And then they're going to believe in, in whatever he comes up with, you know, through what he's already said through entertainment, you know, extraterrestrial life and the arrival of, of, of these beings because, you know, all his demons are going to be down here, permanently cast out of heaven, and then you got the bottomless pit opened up. Oh, my goodness, okay, that's coming. And once the bottomless pit is opened up, Okay, uh, people are going to wish to die, but won't be able. They're going to seek death and will not find it, okay? It's just a terrible day. My goodness. Everybody's going to be bald-headed. Everyone's going to have a bald head because there's going to be radiation in the air, okay? Everyone's uh, uh, sick and, and dying of diseases, and oh, there's famine everywhere, okay? Nothing to eat, okay? There's no more entertainment. There's no more Hollywood. There's no more music. There's no more uh, uh, whining and dining, okay? The Bible says even strong drink will be bitter unto those who drink it, okay? It, it, cannibalism will be the, the order of the day. Okay, it's every it's everyone for themselves. Okay, and then here comes the Antichrist. He's going to try to restore order, uh, uh, and, and he's going to bring a false peace. And then he's going to tell everyone to take a mark on their right hand or on their forehead if you want to survive. Okay, it's the Hunger Games. Okay, it's the Hunger Games time a trillion. Okay, it's Mad Max on steroids. Okay, it's it's a uh, it's the Book of Eli. Okay. Uh, pumped up, you know, times uh, a, a billion quadrillion, okay? Uh, every every person for themselves, uh, men and women eating their children, those who are born during that day, okay? Those who have babies, okay, uh, during the tribulation, okay? Uh, it's just going to be a terrible time, okay? Uh, you don't even want to see it. Uh, and thank God that he has made a way of escape. And the way of escape is through Yeshua HaMashiach. And he says, come unto him, whoever you are, and you, you can find safety in this day. And safety is in the Father's house when this door opens. When the door in heaven opens, Yeshua appears on the cloud, uh, we can find safety inside the Father's house. But the choice is yours. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, confess him with your mouth, believe in your heart that he has risen from the dead, and you shall be saved. Okay, it's as simple as that, but the choice is yours. But you have to humble yourself and say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and I believe in what you did for me. And he will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But the time is running out as we went over in this teaching, uh, this teaching on the signs. I uh, hope that this was edifying to some uh, someone out there. And I pray that uh, you'll be ready as, as well as I'll be ready. And we'll only be ready if we continue to abide in Jesus. Uh, he sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. He is our hope. He is our sure foundation. He is our rock. And as long as we are planted on the rock, we'll never be moved. Hallelujah. Even when the heavens and the earth shake, we will not be moved. Hallelujah. We will have a firm foundation because we have received the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. So let us continue with endurance and patience and perseverance as overcomers. Hallelujah. And we overcome the world, the flesh and the devil by the word of our mouth uh, and by the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. It's our testimony and the blood. Hallelujah. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
and believe in your heart that he has risen from the dead and you will be saved. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll be back uh, with another teaching soon, uh, going over the details of Revelation. Say thank you and praise the God forever and ever. In Yeshua's name, amen.